so excited you could come over. Um, I've been, it's been so hard to wait to open this until you got here. Um, so this is my new, my first package from the tasting room at lot 18. Um, so this is a wine subscription, but what they give you first is this box. Um, and let's see what's in it. Enjoy your taste today. These samples are not meant to be cellared, but rather tasted and enjoyed today. Which we're going to do. Tasting room. Like what you taste? Visit www.tastingroom.com and buy full-size bottles of your favorite. So the way this works is it's about $10. I'll read through all of these as well. Um, it's about $10, and you get, this is packaged so nicely, with the tasting room, cardboard, to keep it safe and it's recyclable, so there's that, and you get these six little bottles, I'll take one out, these are really nice. And they're glass bottles. Very cute. Um, and what you do is you do this tasting and then you rate the wine on their website. And once you rate the wine on their website, they then choose wines for you every quarter. Um, and when you sign up for this tasting, you pay $10, no shipping. And then your first quarter, you get 12 bottles for, I believe it's $89.95, which is a really good deal on 12 nice bottles of wine, especially if I like the wine. And I'm hoping that with this tasting, I'm more likely to like the wines that they pick. And then after that, every quarter, you can continue to get 12 bottles of wine. And I believe the price goes up to $39.95. So you get it for half price the first quarter. And then every quarter after that. And honestly, um, if you drink wine, which um, I am thinking of actually splitting this with my dad. Yeah, you know my dad. Um, and we both drink wine, but not a ton of it. So I'm thinking if we split an order, uh, we'll each get six bottles of wine a quarter. And I easily buy two bottles of wine a month. Um, and I will spend, you know, $14 for a bottle of wine when it goes up to $139. is is not outrageous for me to spend on a bottle of wine. Um, and if I like the first batch that I get, um, it's definitely worth it for me if I'm going to get bottles that I think I'll like because I end up buying, you know, $12 bottles and then not liking them 
Um, obviously, you're not going to like all $12 bottles, although you can get some great wine for $10 and $12. Um, so here's the little paper that comes with this. And it says, tasting room, important how to use this tasting kit. Log in, number one, log into tastingroom.com and rate with your computer, tablet, or mobile phone. Your personal wine tasting will start automatically. Make sure you've chilled the white wines before logging in. Two, taste the samplers following the simple on-screen directions, which will walk you through your very own personal wine tasting. Three, rate your samplers to receive your profile. Our patent pending wine print technology will explain in plain English which wines are right for you. Wines that are perfect for you. Based on your ratings, our personalization technology will then compile your first shipment of wines tailored to your tastes. Oh, this is cute. Here's how to get the most out of your wine experience. Tasting Room makes it easy to explore your taste preferences and discover the type of wine that's perfect for your palate. Swirl. Set the glass on the table and gently rotate it. Yeah, I've learned that where you kind of take your hand on the bottom and just do that. Gently rotate it in a few small circles. Swirling brings out more of the wine's aromas. Smell. Place your nose over the glass and sniff gently, enjoying the array of different smells as they reveal themselves. Sip. Let the wine sip on your tongue. Sit on your tongue for an extra second before you swallow. Note its flavors and feel in your mouth. Think. Take a moment to note whether you enjoyed the wine or not, or were you indifferent to it. There's no wrong answer. That is cute, cute. And this is your white wine tasting mat. <laughs> Using your mat is easy. Just go to tastingroom.com slash rate and follow the simple instructions. Start your wine tasting adventure now. Oh, and there's your red wine tasting. So that's just cute. It just gives you a little spot to put your bottles. Cute, cute, cute. So are you ready to do the tasting? Yeah, I got the whites all chilled. Um, okay, so the two whites that they provided are 10 Sisters Sauvignon Blanc, 2010, from Marlsboro, New, Ze New Zealand. And that's 13% alcohol. And Loophole, uh, 2010 Santa Barbara County Chardonnay, that's 14.2% alcohol. So let's try each of these. Pour some of that in for you. Okay, there you go. And then I'm going to have one as well. Let's give that a shot. Cheers. Mm, that's good. So that's the Ten Sisters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what it says here about this one, let's see. Ten Sisters Sauvignon Blanc has a delightfully fragrant and complex bouquet with underlying citrus aromas. The palette is crisp and lively. Yes, it tastes very crisp and lively. Mm. And it's elegant layers hinting of tropical fruit. The finish is long and well balanced. The Sauvignon Blanc is given extended lees contact, longer than the majority of Marlboro Sauvignon Blancs, to create complex weight on the palate 
and aging potential to bring out fruit flavors. Oh, so you could age this. I know you don't age most white wines. Um, so that's their Sauvignon Blanc. In Marlboro's ideal growing conditions, our carefully tendi tending of the grapes promotes their natural vigor. In the early growth stage, only the best grapes are left on the vine to ripen, with the rest removed. A small portion of leaves are plucked in order to give the grapes balanced sunshine and further increase flavor. Finally, before harvesting, substandard grapes are again removed. So that's the Ten Sisters. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to have the last sip. Okay, are you ready for the loophole? Here is the loophole. Pour a little for me. Which one do you like better? Yeah, me too. They say your first impression is probably the best. And I'm actually doing it wrong. Here's what they say I should be doing. They actually have a very cute little video. So they say I should be swirling and then sniffing. Mm and then tasting but letting it sit on my tongue for a little bit. Mm. Yeah, I do like that. So this is the loophole one. So those are our two whites and we have to decide which one we like better. So the loophole, um, I guess this is a bottler, not an actual vineyard. So they work with California's most prestigious grape growers. Uh, its winery clients include Cake Bread, Farniente, and Robert Mondave, just to name a few. Uh, to come up with this wine, you needn't worry that you don't recognize the label. The proof is in the juice. Its inherent toastiness makes you want to raise a glass straight away, and its flinty spine and flavors of orange marmalade and lemon cream make it go down all too easy. Yeah, I agree. It's got a very kind of desserty taste. Mm -hmm. Those are nice. Okay. So there are those two lines. Those are the whites. We've picked our favorite. So now we're going to open up the red. So this is hang time. Mm -hmm. So let me pour you some of that. I like the bottle for this one. I like that little, the little grapes there. Those are pretty. So there's hang time, and then we're going to have Tour St. George, Ella Lynn, and Fortuna, and hang time is vintage 2011 Pinot Noir from California, 13.5% alcohol. Um, so not a whole lot of information on that one. I'll find out more about it once we are ready to, once we're done tasting. Okay, and a little for me. There you go. All right, so let's take a sip. Mm. That's an interesting taste. Oh, we didn't do it right here. Let's do it right. It smells nice. Mm. 
not sure how I feel about that one. So that one is uh, Pinot Noir. And uh, they say that they named their grapes after the key part of grape growing, the amount of time grapes spend hanging on the vines. The longer the time on the vine, the more concentrated the fruit character, resulting in wines of distinctive, delicious varietal expression. Winemaker Tony Coltrane works hand in hand with nature to decide exactly how many days on the vine grapes need for perfect ripening. Mm. It smells very fruity. Pinot Noir, and I know I've heard this in wine tastings as well, that Pinot Noir is often considered the most finicky wine. Um, it's very hard to grow in the States, I guess, but there are certain places out on the West Coast that work very well with Pinots, Pinot Noir. Um, and that's why they give theirs tender loving care. They source this wine from select California vineyards, so again, I guess they're a bottler and not a vineyard themselves, that allow grapes to ripen slowly, producing lovely, delicate, intriguing fruit character. Hang Time California Pinot Noir has a vivid red fruit with hints of spice, a lithe texture, and graceful length on the palate. Yeah, I definitely, it definitely sits on your tongue. And I can taste that spice, and that may be why it's not maybe my preference. Um, I like fruitier wines, I think. Um, hang Time Pinot Noir comes from carefully chosen spots throughout California where growing conditions contribute to optimum hang time. Cheers. Okay, and the next one we're going to try, oh, is a Bordeaux. Bordeaux, I like Bordeaux. This is Tour Saint Georges Bordeaux, Appalachian Bordeaux Contrôlé. Um, I am definitely not a French speaker, so ignore my my French. Um, it's a Grand Vin de Bordeaux, which um, I think Grand Vin is supposed to mean something in terms of, um, I know there's a lot of regulation and there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of qualifying of, um, wine. And I should know because I've done some reading about it, but I believe Grand Vin means that the Chateau is, a, is a certain amount of years old or, at, or no, at one point that the wine was, um, considered a great wine, although I think, and don't quote me, I'm kind of making stuff up, I think that like once you're designated a Grand Vin, it's very hard to lose that, so um, even though your wine may not be as good as it was when you became a Grand Vin, um, but again, I'm just sort of talking, I, <laughs> I've done some reading about wines, but uh, my memory doesn't hold on to a lot of that stuff. So this is Chateau Tour St. George. Um, 2010 from France. I do like Bordeaux. This is 13% alcohol. I actually tend to like um, wines like this that have less alcohol in them. There we go. Yeah, I'm not. I don't. I don't need a ton of alcohol in my wine. A little for you, and a little for me. Oh, I spilled a little bit. Okay, here you go. All right, so let's swirl and sniff. Mmm, that smells great. And taste and let it sit on our tongues. Mmm, yeah. I do like that. I thought I would because I do like Bordeaux. Um, and it says, what do you think? Do you have a preference between the two reds we've tried? I mean, they're both good. I think it's just preference. It's, you know, whether you prefer a Pinot or prefer a Bordeaux. So, um, so this is a classic Bordeaux with notes of plum, currant, cranberry, and flowers. And I, that's probably why I like this one better is it's fruitier. Um, 
The palette has just a hint of barnyard earthiness, giving the wine some complexity. A great quaffer for any night of the week. Like quaffable wines. Uh, served with a variety of foods from roast chicken dinner to takeout Italian. Enjoy the youthful exuberance of this red now. So I assume that means don't uh, cellar this. Um, let's see. They also have a quote here from Janine Lettieri. Wines like the 2010 Chateau Tour St. George are always among my favorite finds. Who doesn't love great wine that comes from a world-renowned region and was made in an outstanding vintage? It's even better when it has a tiny number on the price tag, and this Bordeaux definitely has that. It's like seeing a $1,500 necklace marked down to $47 and buying up a dozen of them before the store realizes its mistake. Well, there's no mistake here. Buy up a dozen or more bottles before this one disappears like an underpriced gem. That's cute. Okay, so we're moving on to our last two reds. And again, like I said, we're going to go through um, Lot 18's um, survey. So it will then tell me what kind of wine um, aficionado I am. <laughs> So this is Elvin. Um, it's a Malbec, and it's from Nuquien, Patagonia, Argentina. Uh, I do like South American wines. I lived in Chile for a little bit, and um, I liked their wines quite a bit, although I wasn't a big, big wine drinker. This is when I was much younger, and so I didn't really drink wine back then very much. Um, so I missed out. <laughs> but I did like it. Um, this is 14% alcohol, and it says Munoz de Toro Wines. So I don't know what that means, but we'll see. We'll give that one a shot. There we go. Okay. Oh, jeez, I'm spilling all over the place. Trying not to pour too much since we're drinking all this wine, but here you go. Okay. Is there a piece of paper I can use to? No. <laughs> I was hoping to sop up some of this wine. Um, okay. So then let's do this one right too. Mm-hmm. That's nice. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. It's easy to drink. And let's see. It says, this approachable red greets the nose with lovely fruit red fruit aromas of strawberry and raspberry, together with a hint of spice. Similar flavors coat the palate with the addition of a wonderful red plum jam component mixed in. This medium-bodied Malbec has just enough acidity to keep it all light on the tongue and enough smooth tannins to rank this red a step above similar wines in this price point. A true delight, this wine will please an array of wine lovers. Serve it with light hors d'oeuvres and Chartoucerie. I think I pronounced chartoucerie correct. It's funny because I read about chartoucerie all the time. But um yeah, I never have to say that loud. So this also has a quote from Nicole Nabish. Um these are all wine people who work in the wine industry. Patagonia, just the thought of it evokes adventure, discovery, and perhaps a brightly colored puffy jacket. The Elalin wine of Eduardo uh, Cáceres Caballero, Cáceres, probably Cáceres Caballero, opened my eyes to the vast winemaking possibilities on the frontier of South America. 
show your friends that you're no slouch when it comes to great wines from far off places. Your wallet will like your adventurous side too. <laughs> Cute. Okay. So the last one we have is the Fortuna. And this is a 2010 of Paso Robles Cabin, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. 13.5% uh, uh, alcohol. And this just doesn't have much on there. So let's try it. There we go. Okay. Let me just try to pour without making a big old mess. Little for you. For me. Okay. Yay, I did it. Okay. So last wine. Cheers. Okay. So we'll do it the right way. That's interesting. I wouldn't say it's my favorite of the bunch, but it's interesting. Let's see what this says. Believe it or not, this smells like bacon buried in a bowl of warm cherries. Okay, and it tastes pretty much just like it smells. Then moves into more dark, brambly fruit notes with an intriguingly earthy, spicy tobacco thread running through it. A warm backbone of soft tannins brings a nice balance and food friendliness, but really this is a wine just to kick back with and enjoy. Yeah, I think it's a little bit too kind of dark and tanniny for me, maybe. Again, not bad. It's definitely good, but... Um, I think I like the fruity better. And again, I, I think a lot with wine is just your preference. Um, so the quote from this is from Kevin Boyer. And it says, if you go looking for the Fortuna Winery in Paso Robles, you'll be driving around in circles for hours because it doesn't exist. <laughs> so what's this wine exactly? It's a blend that we sourced from Silverado Wine Growers, which has supplied grapes to everyone from Saintsbury to Etude to Layer Cake. If you're just looking for a solid, affordable red, you can't go wrong with this cab. It's an interesting quote. Not very glowing. But, well... One last sip. Well, I really like those. Um, I'm definitely happy with my purchase of this box. This was much more than $10 worth of fun. Um, the excitement of getting the box in the mail, having to sign for it, remember that because it's alcohol, you have to be there to sign for it from UPS when it comes. Um, but having this beautiful box, um, knowing what was in it, knowing that um, I'm going to have my um, wine taste rated, and knowing that this is just the start, and that it means um, that I'm going to have a whole case of wines that I will hopefully love get delivered to my house um, is very, very exciting. I love wine tastings. I love, um, I love little bottles of wine because they are so cute. Um, and I just like being able to try lots of different things. I'm trying to learn about wine. I've been going to these wine pairing dinners once a month as much as I can because they, um, they're almost like a master class in wine. They have, um, often, uh, people who've worked in wineries and sometimes even the makers of the wine you're tasting come and talk at that, uh, event. And so, you know, being able to share wine tasting with you is a lot of fun. And, um, Again, I'm very excited about Lot 18's tasting room to begin with, uh, but now I'm even more excited in the fact that you get all this information and um, 
you can go on and do your wine profile. It just makes it that much more personal, that much more exciting. Um, and I hope this was exciting and fun for you. It definitely was for me. And uh, I'm so glad I didn't have to do this tasting alone. Okay. Night-night.